Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we will be discussing about ER diagrams or entity relational diagrams. These are very very important diagrams because in uh, whenever we go for designing any database or any uh, relational database, basically, we uh, always need a good ER. Uh, you can say always need a good ER diagram in order to represent a particular scenario and represent the relationship between the different participating objects or participating. Uh, particular entities of a particular organization or a uh, situation or a scenario for which we want to do the model so in order to uh, do the modeling we first of all we should know that what are the symbols and what are the things that are basically the requirement of any entity uh, relational diagram so the first thing is entity so entity is anything that has a unique or a, a, a particular a physical existence that does not need uh, the, any other thing to specify or to uh, explain itself so anything any uh, the a particular composed thing that has its own existence or physical existence is known as an entity for example a student a uh, employee a human being a uh, project or anything that is basically a complete unit that has its own existence so in er diagram we basically represent such thing with a with this shape like this a rectangle this basically represents an entity a strong entity that does not need anything else to rely on that has its own uh, existence Similarly, uh, there are certain entities that are not strong enough to represent themselves uniquely without the, uh, you can say, help from some another entity. These uh, are represented by a double rectangle box and these are known as weak entities. Weak entity. So the symbol that represents weak entity is this double box. So strong entity is represented by a single box and weak entity is represented by a double box. Now, let's say uh, I take an example uh, like this. If I am discussing about the student, so student is an entity that has its own unique existence. So in order to represent student, I will write student like this and i'll enclose this word in a you can say rectangle like this so this represents a student that has its own properties now coming towards the properties the properties of any entity are you can say uh, known as attributes or the thing that defines a particular entity are the attributes now in order to represent an, attri uh, an attribute or um, you can say column name we have got different uh, notations basically so first of all number uh, one is simple attribute when we talk about simple attribute so the way to represent it is by using a single oval like this for example if i have to represent the name of a student so i'll write it like this student and it's the attribute number one is name so i'll write it like this Similarly, if I have to represent the registration number of a student, I'll write registration number and enclose it in an oval, oval like this. So this basically represents a simple single or simple attribute. Uh, since you know that attributes are also of different types, so the second type of attribute is composite attribute. Composite attribute. Okay, these are the attributes that are basically that comprise of multiple parts or multiple sub attributes that is if in order to represent a composite attribute i draw structure something like this and uh, ovals attach with a single or main oval and these ovals can be of any number okay so uh, to give you uh, an example of this let's say let's assume i have got an entity uh, student and i have to represent the uh, attribute of a student uh, which is address so address you know address comprise of you can say various uh, uh, you can say uh, factor or uh, various values so various by various values i mean that uh, address basically uh, has you can say city number street number maybe house number lane number or whatever so this address is if i want to split it i have various options like for example city number one i can add lane number 
I can add maybe street number. I can add house number. So it depends. Ke, uh, it depends on various uh, things that how many attributes you want to add to a ad, uh, address. So here address is a composite attribute. It basically comprises of further uh, attributes or further parameters that can be considered as a valid attribute. Okay, ji. So the third type of attribute is multi-valued. Multi-valued attribute. These are the attributes basically that may contain more than one value in a particular entity. For example, uh, let's say every student has different hobbies and every hobby, uh, every the total number of hobbies every student has may vary uh, as per a student per person or student by student. So in order to represent all those attributes that are having any number of attribute, it depends on a particular entity value that how many attributes that, how many values that may contain. For example, if I am a student, then I may have only one hobby that is reading. If I consider another my bias fellow, he he or she may have another hobbies, set of hobbies, maybe gardening, maybe reading, maybe uh, driving or anything else. So in order to represent this type of this type of attribute, we use the multi-valued attributes and they are represented by double oval. So if I have to represent the hobby, so I write it like this single oval and then another oval like this. So this represents that this is the particular parameter that or particular attribute that may have more than one values okay uh, the another or last type of you can say attribute is derived attribute okay when we talk about derived attributes so as name specify these are the attributes that are derived from some other attributes for example if i ask student to enter date of birth in a system like this as a simple uh, you can say variable and now I will uh, want to calculate the age so this age would become the derived attribute derived attribute are basically represented by dotted over like this okay so since we can calculate the age from the date of birth of a student that has already been entered by the student so we don't need to explicitly ask the student to enter the age because the, since the date of birth has already been entered so we need not to ask for the age of the student we can derive this age from this date of birth uh, or attribute over here so in order to represent the derived attribute we uh, draw this over like this okay this uh, till this point we have seen how to represent an entity how to represent a weak entity and how to represent the attributes of different type and different nature okay so uh, till this point we have like completed the all the things of one particular entity but this cannot we cannot uh, like end it over here why because you can see that um, these attributes or these entities are uh, somehow connected with each other. Every entity has attributes but this entity is connected with some other entity via some uh, you can say symbol or via some thing that is known as the relationship. So in order to represent the relationship we draw this diamond shape like this. Like this, we draw the diamond shape between the entities. For example, if I uh, give you an example of this, let's say there is a teacher who teaches students. So here you can see teacher is an entity, student is also an entity and the relationship between these two is teacher, teaches, teaching. So teacher teaches so uh, teacher teaches students so this is how we basically link the you can say two uh, different type of entities together and uh, we basically you can say uh, create the relationship between the two uh, entities over here like this uh, teacher teaches students so uh, when it comes to the attribute we add attributes with these entities just like the way we have added over here this is how we basically uh, create the link or create the relationship between uh, you can say two different entities now how many entities can be uh, 
linked via this or how many relationships can be created like this or how many types of relationships are there that may uh, vary okay so this this basically uh, this page or all the things that have been drawn over there represents all type of attributes and entities and how to connect the two entities now in how many ways these entities can be connected is uh, that uh, we have uh, various relationship types okay so if i write it like this we i have got various relationship types so the most commonly used uh, uh, relationships are uh, types are you can say unary binary and you can say ternary and for uh, other you can use an ary relationship okay so uh, when we talk about unary relationship uh, this basically this type of relationship comprises of a single entity that is one entity having relation with itself one entity having relation with itself whereas when we talk about binary we have got two re two entities that are having a relationship among themselves as i have shown already in the previous page okay and in when we talk about ternary we have got three participating entities that are somehow linked with each other and when we talk about nary relationship we have n different entities that are somehow linked with each other uh, via any relationship okay so here uh, if i give you example of each of this type so when we have got only uh, one single uh, entity th that is for example uh, i take a uh, uh, student student is an entity okay student has its unique existence let's say stu uh, this particular student lives in a hostel and sharing a room with you can say another uh, roommate so this is known as unary relationship where a student is sharing a room with another roommate so both of the uh, you can say resident of the particular room are students so this type of relationship is you know you can say as unary okay similarly if i uh, draw it like this that uh, i have got uh, two entities like this uh, let's say there is a project on which employees works on employee works on a certain project so here you can see that this employee is also an entity this project is also an entity and this works on is a relationship that is basically connecting two entities since the two entities are participating in this so this type of relationship is binary relationship okay now let's consider an example of ternary relationship let's say a student enrolls in a you can say course and uh, get some grade so you can see student is also a unique entity course is also having a unique existence and grade is also having a unique existence but they all of them are linked somehow that a student uh, enrolls in a particular course and obtain a particular grade so this type of relationship is known as ternary relationship because in this uh, type of relationship there are three number of total participating entities that are being taking the par uh, part of the uh, that are basically playing their part in the performing a certain task so uh, here i have got three different types of relationship unary binary and ternary and, and this basically represents how different entities uh, coordinate with each other and how different entities are somehow linked with each other okay so when we talk about this relationship types we must not forget about the constraints so what are the constraints that are applied on a particular you can say um, relationship uh, or uh, any any relationship so when we talk about constraints we come up with the you can say two different uh, type of constraints so number one is you can say cardinality ratio
and the second one is participation constraint okay for the sake of simplicity here uh, i am only considering you can say uh, the uh, binary type of relationship and i am not looking into the all other types of the relationship for the sake of simplicity uh, later on we can uh, talk about the other uh, you can say uh, relationship okay so when we talk about the cardinality ratio uh, of uh, you can say a binary relationship it basically uh, specifies the maximum number of relationship instances that an entity can participate so the total number of you can say uh, it represents how or in what manner a particular entity participates with another entity by providing minimum or maximum value so we have basically uh, three or uh, you can say different uh, types of cardinality constraints or ratios with that is number 1 is 1 to 1 number 2 is 1 to many it is same as many to one and many to many okay so what's the difference between all of these things so one to one basically represents that only one uh, instance or one instance uh, can you can say uh, work on the only and only one instance of the other entity one to many represent that one instance of one side of a relationship entity of one side of a relationship can participate with or can work with many instances of the other side of the entity or other side of the entity at the other side of the relationship similarly many to one represent that many instances on one side of uh, the entity on one side of the uh, relationship can participate with only and only one instance of the entity at the other end of the relationship and many to many uh, basically represents the relationship type in which many instances of one entity can participate with the many instances of the other entity so uh, these are the you can say cardinality constraint to give you an example of each of them uh, let's consider uh, it one by one so when we talk about the uh, one to one relationship cardinality constraint so you can see uh, let's say i have an entity department and each department is being head by a particular you can say chairperson or a particular head so you can see that for each department there is only and only one person that is chairing that department and one chairperson one person which is a chairperson is uh, the hosting or is managing only one department so in order to represent this thing one and one relationship we write the symbols like this one and only one that is minimum one person uh, must chair or must manage a one department and minimum one department can have one chair person so this is one to one relationship it is represented by this symbol okay when we talk about one to many or many to one relationship so let's take the example like if we have department as an entity and there are various employees that work under the umbrella of one particular department so one department may have many employees but one employee will only work under the umbrella of one department for instance if i am the person that is hired under the department of you can say computer science so my department will remain computer science not humanities not any any other department whereas one department can have many other employees that is a uh, one department cs department may have many other cs faculty members so in order to represent this type of relationship we write it like this that each employee is a part of one and only one department whereas each department may have one or many relationship so this represents minimum one and this represents many relationship if we say a department may have zero so we replace this one with zero as zero over here zero or many so this represents one 
and only one each employee is uh, under the umbrella of one and each department may have many employees so when we talk about this entity and we try to write the relationship of this this like this one department may have many employees so we write this symbol over here Similarly, each employee is a uh, part of only and only you can say one department. So we will write one with this department, not with the employee. Okay. Each employee is placed under one department. So we write one over here. Similarly, for many to many relationship, let's say um, I write it like this that uh, consider employees. Each employee may work on one project at one time. Or they may work on any number of project at one particular instance of time. So one employee may work on one or many project and on one project one or many employees may work on at one particular time. So in order to represent many to many relationship we write it like this. Crowfoot this is known as Crowfoot and this represents the minimum uh, value of uh, the particular you can say participating instances so here uh, one thing uh, that must be uh, you can say clear which is this represents minimum value of instances and this represents max value of instances that is minimum one instance uh, minimum one and maximum is many Similarly, over here, if I have to write uh, minim minimum values as uh, minimum 1 or if I may write it like this 0 or 1. So, I can replace this one with 0 in order to represent that 0 entities can also participate which is technically there is no participation of the particular entity. And for max, we always use this type of symbol, Crowfoot symbol. We associate it with 1 or 0 like if minimum value is 1 we associate it we associate crow foot with 1 if minimum value is 0 we associate crow foot with 0 similarly when it is 1 to 1 we may associate if there is only one uh, instance that can participate 1 and only 1 so we write it like this and if the minimum value is 0 and maximum value is 1 so we can write it like this as well that minimum participating entities are 0 and maximum is 1 so this basically specify minimum maximum minimum maximum limit of the uh, you can say any um, number of instances that are participating in a particular relationship okay same goes for binary same goes for unary relationship say in the same way we represent them okay so uh, second type of constraint is participation constraint so participation constraint basically specify whether existence of an entity depend on its being related to another entity okay so uh, when we talk about participation constraint we basically look whether a particular entity is participating to which level that is um, either all of the instances are participating or part of the instances are participating in a particular relationship to give you an example of this let's consider the relationship between student and faculty okay so when i talk about faculty so each faculty teaches or conduct the class you can say of a particular you can say student or a group of student i'll just write class here Faculty teaches a particular class. Okay, just uh, remember one thing that these entities and relationship names should be very clear and very uh, like they should be very very um, like close to the real world scenario. Like here you can see faculty represent teacher, class represents students. Teachers means the relationship between teacher and classes uh, teaching. Okay, so here you can see that one faculty member teaches a particular class so now we basically look at the instances of both of these uh, entities class and faculty and we basically try to identify whether these are participating in this particular relationship in which manner either total or partial so we basically have like two uh, type of participation constraint number one is total constraint participation constraint and the second one is you can say uh, partial or optional participation constraint in total participation constraint we specify that the instance all uh, the instances of a particular entity or uh, in simpler words in a table of class all the uh, 
रोज ऑल दी रिकॉर्ड आर बेसिकली बींग पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन आर बींग यू कैन से पार्ट ऑफ दिस रिलेशनशिप दैट इज इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द क्लास वन लेट से तो अ टीचर इज टीचिंग अ क्लास सो ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास वन आर बींग टॉट बाय अ पर्टिकुलर टीचर सो दिस एंटिटी ऑल द इंस्टेंसेज आर बींग इंगेज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर रिलेशनशिप वेर एज वेन आई टॉक अबाउट द फैकल्टी सो one faculty is teaching a one particular class whereas maybe at the same time some other faculty member of the same institute is having a free period or free time so you can see that all of the faculty members are not engaged in teaching uh, any class at at a particular moment so the participation of this faculty is partial some of the faculty members are playing their uh, part in this particular relationship whereas every class is being taught by a particular teacher in a given particular time so the participation of this entity is total all of the instances are participating whereas only a few instances of this uh, faculty is taking uh, or playing their role in this uh, in basically running or in the this particular relationship so this is uh, how we distinguish um, different type of you can say constraint from one another cardinality constraint represents how different entities are linked with each other one to one one to many or many to many that's a generic representation and participation constraint basically represents that how many entities are taking uh, how many instances of an entity are taking uh, or are playing their role in order to um, uh, you can say represent when we are representing this particular relationship how many basically instances are playing their uh, role in this particular relationship either all are playing or some of them are being engaged in this relationship for example let us consider this type of relation where each department has a cheer person so both of the entities have one uh, you can say uh, all of we can say mapped values like each chair person is of department and each department has a chair person so the participation constraint of both of them are total similarly when we talk about department and employees each employee has a department and each department has employees has employees so all uh, both of them are basically uh, uh, participating uh, as total or completely participating whereas employee versus project some projects are work, uh, being under this provision or uh, so, some employees are basically working on some project whereas it is quite possible that we have hired a new employee which is on, in the training phase and you do not allocate any project to the particular employee so in this type of relationship each project project is being assigned to employee so the participation uh, constraint of project entity is total whereas each employee might not be assigned a project so the participation constraint of this employee is partial this is how we distinguish between uh, participation constraint and uh, you can say different and the entities how they are basically uh, in relationship with the other entities okay ji that's it for today's lecture uh, let me summarize it for you in this lecture we have uh, discussed about the er diagram different symbols uh, that we use in er diagrams entities attributes relationship types and uh, in the end we concluded with the different types of constraints that's it for this lecture if you have any question do comment it and if you like the video press the like button and do subscribe to my channel thank you for watching